I am unashamed. What about you? Yeah, so we we were supposed to have sound <clears throat> in the first podcast today, so we had to replace him with Nurse Man, uh, Nurse Man Chad, because uh, apparently size somewhere traveling. I don't know. So I, I guess he's not be there for y'all's podcast either. No, no, no I, we've already rescheduled. So <laughs> you know, you got to have the kid if he's alive and well. That's so. exactly right. So so we we have uh, Godwin and Martin. Uh, on the podcast that uh, Jace is uh, traveling abroad to uh, Greece. Uh, so we send Jace out, Martin, every uh, so often just to get stories and come back because that usually. <laughs> uh, the boy's got a problem talking, don't he? <laughs> he's yeah. he's going to be able to do that. So, <clears throat> all right. So, right off the bat, since you guys are, and Martin, this is your first time on Unashamed. So, welcome. Yeah. Godwin's been here before. Um, so, you guys have – I was calling it our sister podcast because that's what you call things like that. But I, I thought, well, I started, started calling it the brother podcast because we're all men, so it just yeah. it seemed to feel a little bit better. But so the Duck Call Room, uh, which we started uh, this past year, I guess. How long has it been? Yeah, we're remember. almost – we're crowding a year now. Yeah. I think the first one was like the first week of December. Right. And then we did one a week for a while, and then all of a sudden we're doing two a week. and. I like it. It's it's actually in the Duck Call Room, you mm-hmm. know, at Duck Commander. And, and, of course, from the show's perspective, a lot of our fans, you know, watch the show. So it's very nostalgic. And I, I run into people. I was just in up in Massachusetts uh, last weekend, and I run into most people that listen on a shame have, have also watched or listened to the Duck Call Room. And, you know, inside, of course, is there's – you know, doing side things, which makes it great, which is, yeah. I'm <laughs> just glad there's no bell in here. I'm not listening to somebody bang on a bell that's, constantly. That's it's exactly nice. right. We don't do it. So I have to get it right off the bat because Jace is not here. Y'all are, y'all are in his place, so to speak. Um, so Jace made a comment at some point recently, and I don't know that he mentioned y'all by name, but apparently he referenced your podcast being the Kitty podcast, mm-hmm. and I don't, I don't remember the con. Josh, do you remember the po- the the context of it? No, he doesn't no. remember either. So I don't know what we were talking about that he would so such defame, you know, our brother podcast by calling you the Kitty podcast. But I heard you threw him under the bus, which I loved because that's normally what Dad and I do here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got it. Yeah, and, and and look, I got to apologize because in the comment section, there were people that blamed you for it. Really? So we fired a few shots at you too, Al. So look, but look, that's what I said <laughs> I on our podcast. I would never call you the Kitty Podcast. <laughs> well, I'm, I didn't know. Sometimes you, you, you got a sharp tongue too. Man. So don't, I don't, do. don't. I kind of do. But I was like, I well, probably who, let him down the road and then let him take the fall. My deal was like, whoever it is, I'm going to shoot at both of you and yeah. we'll just have fun because whoever it is don't matter because we can sit here and look at each other and laugh about it. That's so, what everybody oh, says. That's what you got to understand about all of us. That's In fact, it was funny because whenever um, whenever I was going to first start appearing on the show, I mean, y'all had already been, y'all had done three seasons before I ever came on the show. And the producers were like super worried about me. They didn't want me on the show, to be honest with you, because I was a preacher. And they thought, oh, here we go. We're already having to deal with Phil, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, so, and so now we're going to bring the preacher in, you know. So they're imagining like even more of the stuff that they're hating. And so they were like, but they were worried that I couldn't like play into the banter of what we call throwing one another under the bus. Yeah. Which we do, you know, with, with equal enthusiasm. Absolutely. So, so when they told me that, they were like, well, Al, you know, your brothers and, you know, and Martin Godwin seem like they have played into this. You know, they're, they're pretty good about, you know, they call it throwing each other on the bus. And, and how do you feel about that? I was like, I built the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I drive the bus. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. We're all I have no issues <laughs> with the, the bus. Lead. You're the lead bus. <laughs> I, I'll run up, throw you under the bus and make you think somebody else threw you under the bus. So one of our listeners out here, Send me a note, and you will, and, and remind me of the context of how I played into the Kitty podcast. But y'all, so y'all had a segment where you where you ripped into it pretty good. Yeah, right? yeah, we got both of them. <laughs> uh, we got both of you. So <laughs> my apologies. We stayed away from the OG here, uh, just yeah. be, because we're smart. Out of respect, <laughs> yeah, yeah, out of respect. Uh, but no, I mean, I think that's one of the things that to me is the most fun about Duck Commander, and it, like we're. It's very much a locker room mentality. It's like you never left the sports field because everybody right. can razz each other, 
and nobody gets their feelings hurt. Right. We smile and we try to give as good as we get. Size, and, of, yeah. size original start for his introduction to the world. Uh, <laughs> it came about when I said, Jay said, Chase was building the reeds. Yep. And he said, you need to get somebody to, to help us with these reeds. It's said, a very monotonous job. So I thought yeah. about it a few days, you know, so I said, I'll tell you what. I said, oh, Cy. I said, the, the last thing I heard, now I'd seen him on and off for 25 years if he got a layoff from the military because – the way his military career started, if your grade point average dropped below a C, you got a letter two weeks later. If you kept your, if you kept a C average, they didn't contact you. But the U.S. military, if, if during the Vietnam era, if you fell below, if you were attending college and your grade point average dropped below a C, it's been nice knowing you. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, and we'd go to the, yeah, go. Go to the they had it posted on a board and when you walk by one of the halls you know you look up there everybody's watching it like a hawk because they said you know if this grade point average don't stay up I, it's adios for me so yeah. you go from the low grade board to the you're so going si to I looked and it was below he said Boy, it's been nice knowing you. He said, but it looks like I got, they got other plans for me. Well, two weeks later, they got his letter, and it starts with, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. You get you to go to another. Chosen. So Cy si, si joined up. Uh, I say joined up. How do, what do you call that? He was drafted. He was yeah. drafted. So they got Cy si there. I would see him from time to time on his deployments to Germany, to Vietnam, I would see him every once in a while. He'd just roll in and hunt with us. Tell a few tales. Like the old days, you know. Yeah. So that 25-year span came and went. Well, now he's retired from the Army after 25 years, and now I heard that he was over there in Alabama doing something. And I thought, He was working at a golf course. So I'm looking for a reed, man. <laughs> yeah, he was Jay a green said, find a reed, man. I said, all right. So why didn't get away? He said, because this is, this is laborious. It gets old. So anyway... <laughs> I called Cy up and I said, I think he'll come. So I called him up and I said, Cy, I said, what are you doing? He said, working on this golf course over here. And he told me a little bit about blue wing teal. He said, but they won't let me kill him. He said, teal hit the thing. He says, it got full of bass. He said, they don't like Deer me running around. They don't like me hit the fishing on it. I said, well, look, I said, here's the deal. I said, if you'll come over here and build these duck call reeds, you be the reed man. I said, then you that you 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 have to duck hunt. Stipulation: you have to duck hunt every day of the duck season if you're going to be a duck call reeds for me. You have to hunt when hunting season come. I've been doing that requirement. I said I'm chumming him. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he said I duck hunt every day. I said you duck hunt every day instead of going out there mowing the greens. I said it sounds like a better deal to me, but you call you call it. He said. I'll be over in a couple of days. <laughs> so I thought, well, two days later, I looked up. It's he, his woman, with U-Hauls, and they have moved from Alabama in the golf course, and they are now part of Duck Commander Duck Call. That's how it got started. I will I will have to admit. That's called a Robertson job interview. So, <laughs> so, I, so he made the first few tens of thousands of duck call reads Cy Robertson is the one who did that. Yeah, we had a little good one lung machine, not much of one, but now they've moved on and made it quicker, you know. But that was Cy. But looking back at it, that's the greatest thing that could have ever happened to him. Well, exactly. He, oh, be, he it, became rich. It got he him became here. famous, and the rest is history. Cy was not going to survive the golf course. <laughs> no. Then he tell, I mean, he's told that on ours, like, that if, like, coming here saved his life. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, yeah. no, it, it would have never. <laughs> You know, they were What's depressed that and mad. But it's funny that Cy, effectively, his only two careers he was drafted for. <laughs> yeah. He didn't really have a choice. <laughs> I never thought well, about think that. think about it. You call a man up. Here's what the deal is. You build the reeds, and you have to duck hunt every day of the duck season. And that's the deal. I said, you got your little army check there to help you out. I said, I can't pay you a whole lot. I think I told him, I said, 15000 a year or something. I said, you get 15000 a year on top of all that. Big bucks back then. Well, yeah. I didn't expect him to show up in two days. He was yeah. here. 
Well, he'd been here ever since. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you see what now you're seeing what's left to, to him, you know. Great observation, though, Mark, because Cy <clears throat> si has always looked up to dad. I mean, there's no doubt. He's, he's, he's dad's, you know, the younger brother, but in a way that it's always like kind of larger than life for Cy. Si. He's so, the one uh -huh. that when I raised a trammel net on the Washita River, I had 150 yard long trammel nets fishing the bottom of the river from the from the bottom up about six to eight feet. And I was peeling it out of the boat. Well, I had him running the motor and we put them out. We went back the next day to, to run them. And he said, I got a question is about July. Wait till the current stopped in the river right. in August. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't run this like that. You know, too much current. But when the current dropped out, I fished it. Well, I got about halfway across the river and I was taking these fish out, you know. And he said, how come you're sweating like that? <laughs> I turned around and I said, I'll let you run the next one. So I went on across, got the fish. We went down to the next net. I said, you take this one. I said, we're going to answer that question you come up with. <laughs> so he, he got about, oh, from here to that wall. He said, good night. <laughs> Woo. Oh. Woo -hoo. He, just, he, would, he would just shake it. I mean, he sweat. I said, so what about it? He said, hey, never. He said, I don't see how you do this. I said, man, it's tough work, but he stayed the course all the way through. The rest is history. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I always thought, you know, because I don't, I don't think the original – creators of the show they weren't sure what size role was going to be early and i don't think they saw him like as a main character which is yeah. funny how it goes with tv people because you know people sit around a table and make decisions about we were all real people <laughs> at a real company <laughs> living our life and everybody had and then they sit around thinking well you know this guy's going to be this and this guy's going to have that role <laughs> i had about five gurus from los angeles movie makers they come up to me one day and they said, Mr. Robinson, what do you think about a guy who will who will go right up to the edge of the line before making a complete fool out of himself <laughs> and an idiot, and but he will stop? And I said, well, before he makes a fool of himself, he will stop. I said, probably wisdom. He's a wise man. He said, no. Nah. He said, you know what you call that? And I, the one that will step across that line and act a fool. He said, they said, you know what you call that? I said, dumb. He said, talent. talent. And I said, talent. I said, I never thought about that. I said, so what are you saying? He said, your brother is way more talented than you are because you'll stop before you make, you're, you're an idiot enough, but you'll stop before becoming a complete fool. He said, your brother will step across that line and relish the thought. No. I said, well, I just never thought about talent being, that being, he said, it's called talent in the, in the movie yeah, business. He won't talent. step across it. He'll run past it. Yeah. <laughs> Once I heard that, I said, now I understand. So Cy, ever since he started, whether the camera's on or not, he steps across the line and That's acts right. a fool. Yeah. And you're like, what? Well, well, and he embraced it, which was so good. And it's interesting. But you know, Don Rickles and all oh, yeah. of them, they had that knack. That's right. Just to mm -hmm. act like an idiot, but it was funny. Right. Or Jim Carrey. You think about Jim all the Carrey, successful all of people. So let's take our first break. So uh, it doesn't sound very fun to be homeless unless you're living under a bridge with a bunch of Haitian immigrants. <laughs> Yeah, that could be a good time, huh? <laughs> Recipes, you know. Yeah. I don't know. That wouldn't sound too good. Oh, so, man. John, you, so we're old neighbors. Yeah. Uh, you live across the street. You still live there. I sold our place a while back. So you probably paid your house off by now. Yep. Which is congratulations. That's hey, that's a, that's a pretty big milestone. It's a huge milestone. It's like getting a raise. Ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Except the problem is now your entire home is all equity, and so you got to make sure you still own that home. Because you think you own it, unless some cyber thief comes in the digital world, steals your title, uh -huh. and then run, runs up loans against your equity. That would be bad, wouldn't it? Would I have to pay for it? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. They, would, they would foreclose you. So that's what happens, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess you know people invent ways of doing evil. So we've got uh, one of our longtime sponsors is HomeTitleLock.com. 
And you, you can go there to their website, register your address, make sure you're not already a victim, especially high equity people like you, John, because you're the ones they're looking for. And use the promo code radio for 30 free days of protection. So it's hometitlelock.com, promo code radio, hometitlelock.com. Size a redneck <laughs> version of that. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a redneck Jim Carrey. Which in yeah. my mind is dangerous ground, but I mean, right. hey. So as I long as they it. keep it there, don't try to get serious. Jim Carrey has got all serious now, and I don't. he's not fun anymore. He's not, me. no. So I was going to ask you all about that. That was one of the questions I had to ask you all was the, the show itself, because, I mean, you all work for the company. I, and Martin, tell how, because this is your first time doing a shave, so tell the audience you have a very interesting way, speaking of getting hired, uh, how you came to Duck Commander. Tell, tell that story. I yeah, I was just, uh, so I was working at Tyner Peachers, TP Outdoors, a little local place. Willie had taken over the company um, and, and started getting all the stuff, the shotguns and all that stuff came through us. So we became friends that he way. He seemed to have the most business sense out of the brothers. Well, he understood. I don't want to knock on you, but I mean, I just looked no, at Willie. I said, I, 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 I bear no, no ill will. <laughs> will. Will needed to be running the company. Yeah. Like, Jason didn't want to do it, and I I'd rather it was, freak. It so. was the best choice. Well, wasn't. Willie was a dreamer, <clears throat> yeah, and no. still is a dreamer. He is a dreamer. So, I mean, he's the guy you want in an entrepreneurial role on that deal. Like, right. so, yep. But he had taken it over. We, so all the stuff started coming through us. I was working there. Met him through that. Um, started playing poker like so many people have done with Cy and Jace <laughs> and Willie. And then we started playing golf. And then I was in graduate school, and I just called him. and was like, hey, man, like, I, I've i got to, like, let my brain just chill. You you have, like, mind-numbing labor I can do. So you ain't got to pay me. You ain't got – like, legit, I'll just do it. I need something to, like, just get all this stuff out of my head. And he was like, huh, free work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, come on out there. And you're a big old boy, Martin, so he's, yeah. he's imagined you doing yeah. a lot of work. Yeah, so I got there. My first job, I was not I was not compensated for this job, mind you, it, but I, Duck Commander had gotten kicked out of Walmart, essentially. Yeah. Like, they weren't on the mod anymore, but the guys at Walmart said, look, our individual stores can order, so if you call them and they order, you can still keep your stuff. Which is ironic. Because that's how it began with Walmart. Yeah, right? before driving, we ever around got on the driving around in my pickup. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I got handed a spreadsheet yep. with sales numbers from every Walmart. And I don't know if you know how many Walmarts there are in this country. <laughs> Five thousand. <laughs> it, it's more than two. It's Five greater. Thousand. It's greater <laughs> right than two. It. <laughs> so I started at one and just worked all the way down. Hey, I need. And also, the hardest part about calling Walmart is getting in touch with a sporting goods manager. Yeah. You that, jump that through those hurdles. That, like that person's the, hard to find. Yeah, it? I mean, could you imagine them on the PA Sporting Goods call on line one or however they used to do it? You know, so yeah. I had to go through all that. I mean, one store would sometimes take you an hour to get to talk to the person. But I did that, and within like three months, they were like, all right, you guys are back on the mod. Because they were ordering so much, they were having to do all these direct orders through our stuff or through Duck Commander stuff, they're like, all right, back in the mod, whatever. So I was like, yeah, man, I got us back in Walmart. Look at there. But I sat in that office on that telephone for a lot of hours just trying to get to them. But then after that, I started, he was like, well, try these other dealers. So, you know, and the world was kind of leaning towards technology and they were like, well, just send me an email. So I was like, Crap, I ain't got an email. I mean, what am I going to do? Get them, send it to Martin, you know, whatever, at ulm.edu. You know, like, no, nah, that's going to be dumb. They're like, who's this guy? Right. So then I was like, hey, whoever, I think it was Becky or Angela. I was like, I need an email address. So then I got Martin at duckcommander.com. And then, You're still not working. Yeah, I'm officially. still not working. I'm still not. I haven't been You're paid like a Kramer. dime. Yeah, I haven't been paid a dime. And so I got that. And then I sent Willie an email from it. And he was like, Oh crap! I guess I need to hire you if you have an email address here. So, uh, you know, and now I mean, I've I have legit worked every job at Duck Commander other than the bookkeeping, which I mean, I feel like I could do that you if I had could. to. You're but you know, yeah, I mean, I've swept floors, I've packaged duck calls, I've built duck calls, I've sold them, I've done it all. And you know, now being the general manager, it was just a winding road. And and I didn't when I started that, I, I didn't have any aspirations to work for Duck Commander. By I just way, needed something long, to do. <clears throat> how long going back to his roots? How long has that been? How Eleven long? years. 
11 years? 11 years since I officially got a paycheck. So okay. probably closer to 12. <laughs> it would probably be 12 now. I mean, well, you know what's interesting, Martin, is because, and we've said this all along, This we've always felt like Duck Commander, the company, was a divine touch. It started with dad, you know, his life mm -hmm. straightened out, and then all of a sudden he just had this vision for what he was going to do. So obviously we've seen God's hand on that. What you just described, and I didn't realize that, I didn't know all that story, mm -hmm. is that, you know, when, when somebody goes to get an MBA or whatever, if you're in a hotel chain, when you go to, to get hired at one of these places, you've, you've got a master's, you're going to run the place. They put you through every, you, you know, you spend six months with the housekeeping people, you sit six months with the people out front with the bags at, at the front desk, because they if you're going to run it, they want you to know every aspect. Mm, yeah. And that's what happened with you without anybody really planning it out. Yeah, I didn't know. I just always operated. My parents taught me, like, when you had a job, make your boss try to figure out what they do if you didn't show up tomorrow. So, like, every job here, like, whatever needed to be done, yeah, I'm in. I'll do it. I don't right. care. Like, because I just wanted to be a member of the team. Like, how do you how do you best fit a team mentality, which is so lost in today's world? Oh, like, no doubt. Even with the people we hire, they come in and, you know, it's that famous line of, that's not my job. I'm like, oh, oh, oh time out. Yeah, <laughs> time out. <laughs> but you're right. That's not, and this no longer is either. So we'll see that's, down the road. That's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, what that I, is. Don't, I, don't, I don't do well with that line. So when, in I, the when, duck call world, I have no idea. Where 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 are we? Uh, where are we, Martin? Ah, uh, we're probably still yeah, we're still number one volume. Yeah. We're um, on duck calls. We're we're well. We're we're healthy. We're doing really good. You know, we had the Duck Dynasty climb, and as interesting as the climb was, so was the fall. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the new normal was still bigger. It than, was still normalized yeah. up from right. where we were prior to the show, and then now we're still. Because of, you know, CV and all this mess, the outdoors is still climbing. And now we've branched off into the turkey calls, the deer calls, the right. fishing stuff. Plus just the stuff that we do anyway. Plus they so. have a, without us really realizing it, working on each one of these birds, we'd get it. We, you know, we finally come up with a wood duck call. Old Catfish Powell got out there messing around. He worked for us for a while. He said, well, what he, about, he would what do about a shotgun shell. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he, he blew that thing. I said, I said, that sounds like a wood duck there, pal. I said, let me see that. So we went from there, but we established all these different calls <clears throat> for pintail, mallard, start with mallard, gadwall, wood duck, teal, teal yep. widgeon. So before it all ended, we had done the research to have pretty well all the ducks that fly that are, are worth even getting into. We developed a call for them, which just came out of that. Just and then what was interesting is the the brand or the brands have grown because then you had Willie was interested in deer hunting, so mm -hmm. that that opened the door for the Buck Commander brand. Yep. Then you guys fish, that's you guys and, mm -hmm. and Stone, and so there's now y'all run a lot of which one is the biggest now? Amazon, one like that, or oh, hands down, yeah, yeah Amazon yeah. has taken over the world. I got um, you. But, I mean, even with Amazon, we're still, you know, it's always a toss-up between Academy, Bass Pro, uh, and now the Fleet Farm stores up north. They're, those yeah. are like our top four. And they, you know, if we lost one of them, it'd be a big deal. But, you know, that's one thing that when I took over, I, I tried to, like, pride ourselves on was customer service. Like, the, you get one chance with these people. So they all like us. And they, to them, it's really cool. Like when I go to a meeting because I was on the show, so right. it's like it's like a little cool factor of like sit down, they ask the normal questions. What's oh, Phil yeah. doing? Is I really like that, you know? So yeah. like, but you build these relationships with the buyers, and then all of a sudden, like your business just continues to grow because when they kick somebody out, right, and that now they see that we got turkey calls or somebody goes out of business, they're like, well, we work great with those guys. Let's give them a shot. So right. now, you know, now we're taking. By the way, we we never most all these companies. They sell to people they used to call distributors, but I never. I tried them a little bit, but I said, uh -uh. I, I remember, said, let's just let's just make good duck calls, and we'll get them out there as fast as we can. I will, and Walmart's in particular, they did make us a national product. Yeah, yeah. when they started, mm -hmm. when you finally talked to them, and I started out as a pickup truck, they said, "Well, you you think we're gonna buy these off the street?" Is that what you, I said, 
Colonel Sanders started with one chicken <laughs> and his buddy. <laughs> one leg. I said, one and, leg. and his buddy, he fried it and his buddy took a bite of it and said, Colonel, that's some good chicken. I said, he started somewhere. I said, that's what we're doing. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, that's why I would say it was more driven by the divine over necessarily. So, Godwin, how'd you, how'd you end up in the. I, I remember when you came down. I mean, Miss K cooked a meal every day at dinner and lots of fried chicken and roast and gravy and deer oh, yeah. meat and ducks and squirrel. Oh, I learned pretty quick to show up around 12 o'clock. <laughs> so when did you come on but board? I'd work. I'd work. It's been, I've been here 20, going on 22 years, and uh, I've been hunting so with y'all. Who converted you? You did. Did I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, he makes a lot of people feel sad. Huh. There, <laughs> yeah, there well, was for a while it, we we had a kind of a code. If you don't convert them, it'll it'll end up yep. biting you. So, well, hang on, let's take a break. So, Martin Goblin, when's the last time that you think you had good old American meat? Good old. When's American? the last time you ate some American meat? I guess the other day, I, I, I grilled me up a steak. Yeah. Well, and he ate brisket from Bucky's. Yeah. I watched you eat that. <laughs> yeah. We both did. Boy, Bucky's, they're great, aren't they? Oh, oh they are. <laughs> well, the problem is sometimes you think you're eating American meat, but did you guys know that 80% of the grass fed beef sold in the U.S. is imported? From overseas. Really? 80%. That's just dumb. There's cows everywhere. Right? That's what I'm yeah. saying. We got, I mean, America, you know, the fruited plains, right? So we have a company, and it's a good old Louisiana-based company. It's called GoodRanchers.com, hmm. uh, and they deliver American craft beef, and they call it better than organic chicken, and it comes right to your house. Steakhouse quality. It's at an affordable price, which is really good, and it just comes to your house and eat it. Jay's been cooking us up some a lot here lately. You go to GoodRanchers.com. Uh, you can buy now or subscribe and get it on a regular basis. You're going to save 20% on each box of mouth-watering meats. So that's goodranchers.com slash Phil. Get an additional $20 off free express shipping if you do it today. Goodranchers.com slash Phil. $20 off and free express shipping for some American beef. So John was... John when he became a Christian, then he and I became neighbors mm -hmm. and he was up there pulling them, uh, what do they call the swing shifts? Yeah. Where he was having oh, to work. You worked at the paper mill. Yeah. Oh. And you did that for 20, 21 years. 21 oh, years. Really? You I've been, been, I've been, been there. That long. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I told him, well, well, this is my favorite part of the story, you, by the way. When you asked me, uh, we was, we was duck hunt. We was in the lake blind, me inside. Y'all, you and Jace was over, uh, Benny. Yeah, Benny's, and uh, yep. there was a lot of ducks. And he Benny said, Prince, he's still after me. Yeah, he said, I think we can finish the video here, get Goblin inside. So Kay called me, and she said, where y'all at? I said, I'm hunting. She said, y'all got to go to Texas. And I'm like, well, if I got to. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I wasn't even working for you then. I mean, I was helping, but. Um, Sounds like a common theme. Yeah. <laughs> well, I come. I didn't well, get no, paid I for did. the first three I, I years was, either. <laughs> I would. I did work for you part time a little bit. Um, right then, then we got up there, and you looked at me. You said, "You about ready to quit that meal, ain't you?" And I was thinking in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I had a family and everything, and it was it was a pretty rough decision. I mean, it was well because you were you were going to make less money, make because, less money, and, but uh, but it was something you loved to do. Of course, uh, yeah. of course, behind the scenes, guy. When I was I was working on your behalf, yeah, to get you uh, plugged in because I, you know, Lisa and I had become. So your best hiring friends. got you in the duck blind too, which was friends' benefit. Well, well, when I'm. Started meeting up there after I obeyed the gospel. Uh, Alan invited me to come hunting one time, and uh, I guess uh, you know I I didn't act like a fool, so I got invited back. And uh, <laughs> we talked about that on the first podcast. Yeah. It's not easy to get your first no, foot in the blind around here. It oh. was uh, it was pretty intimidating getting in the blind for the first time, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna set out this first volley. <laughs> And watch and see what happens. <laughs> oh, I don't Man. even think I put a shell in my gun my first time. I got up. I, was like, I didn't shoot. Nah, I you just, ain't fooling I me, I was son. just looking around how yeah. everybody was operating. 
And when you said cut them and they jumped up and they was ducked, I was thinking, good grief, what work? What, what, what happened? Yeah. When every, every one you get on is dead. That's like, all. Huh, I'm going to have to get faster yeah, if I'm going to get down. around here. Because there was so many people. It was a lot. It was Dement was in there. Curly was in there. Yeah, we had a little crew for the, yeah. the filming. So we were talking about this on the podcast here. Y'all, are, y'all appreciate this because last year was Phyllis's first year to hunt with us. And so – you know, when we hunt together for as long as we have, everybody instinctively knows what everybody's about to do. Yep, yep. And so I'm watching poor Phyllis. She's trying to get into the flow, yeah. but she has no instinct for it because she hadn't learned it yet. So, you know, it would all happen and she would jump up and be looking around <laughs> and then it's over. Yeah. <laughs> and, it just kept, and she was getting so frustrated because it kept happening. I said, I would try to help her. I'd be like, all right, now. When you, when you watch down here, when you see Jay's, when, yeah. when when it's about to happen, then you got to just flow into it. But the instinct of duck hunting is what people yeah. don't realize if you're really good at it, I guess. Well, it's, I got, it's, we got her down to a cripple killer. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel season yeah. this year, I said, now this is, y'all don't shoot this duck. This duck was swimming away, you know. I said, all right. I said, I said, Phyllis, there's your ducks. That start right there. Boom. But Two and a half feet high. I said, <laughs> I said, you shot way over. Did you see where your shot went? She said, she, boom, she shot three feet under. I said, I said, she said, how do you know exactly where it's shooting? I said, there's a little bead out there. Put that bead on that duck's head and aim a little low. Yep. And try him again. Get boom. The, get the ricochet. I said, you have struck, honey. Yeah. <laughs> you got him. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, I done got to where whichever the wind's blowing, you know, so I, I mean, uh, Phil's on one end of the blind and, and Jace is on the other. And it depends on the wind who calls the shot. So whichever, that's the one I'm watching. I'm watching all the time. I'm down and I'm watching because I'm, I'm watching for that hand to go to the gun. When yeah. the hand goes to the gun, that's right. It's time to get ready to get up. But you can't so watch side. So in your no, years, no, don't watch side. In your years of hunting down there, who claimed most of the oh. ducks that died? Oh, oh Si. <laughs> I ain't ever killed one down here. What are you talking no. about? Never in my life. Si did it so much that one of the videos we did, actually he was in the title, The Art of Claiming Ducks. Yeah. yeah. Because he does it so well. Oh, Si set a shotgun down. Three out of three. I don't know what yep. you boys did. I don't know. How many times did you shoot? I didn't. I still got three of them. Yeah. That's, just, that's the way Si is, you yeah. know. But of course, now everybody, <clears throat> Dad considers us Martin. He calls us me, Jace, Stone, the young bucks, and we're all looking at each other like and they're all gray headed. We're, we're not yeah. young. Yeah, well, I com- mean, we're younger no. than him. I done got into old gray haired <laughs> bunch com- now. Comparatively speaking, I guess you are, but yeah. you know, it's exactly. Like, so, so by last the way, Stone. I mean, the Stone. Uh, God, <laughs> by the way, just a thought, but. That that particular growth in a duck line, you could see that for a quarter of a mile. Yeah. For you listeners, he's pointing yeah. to John's now, little yeah. man, I'm gonna have to come up with something black and yeah. at least maybe yeah. temporary. Well, I put face paint in it. Yeah, it, it helps. Probably. Yeah. You yeah. want to get it to like a Spanish moss. That's right. Uh, he's that's all right. right. Not Phil's, white. Phil's uh, saying they can see it. You can't see out of the middle of that duck blind <laughs> if you want it. You can't see out. I know they can't see that's in. That's exactly right. I we, mean. We, we put a lot of brush to hide the, the whiskers, that's for sure. Yeah. The <laughs> first two bunches every morning, you're just, just making a hole. a hole. That's exactly right. You, right. You, come up the first time, you come up the first time and jockey with your shoulders to get <laughs> your hole out. The second time, you shoot the bushes down. <laughs> And then now, okay, we can hunt. <laughs> yeah, but that that first bunch, no, you. I mean, oh, there's paranoia <laughs> run amok, and and it always has been. So, uh, two things I want to mention, Martin. One is you mentioned you first started out playing golf with us, and so I only knew you as Martin, but I assumed that was your first name. I should have known because we tend to call people by their last name. So someone asked me. They said, "Hey, you know, I met this guy. And he said my cousin's been playing golf with you." I said, Who, "Who's your cousin?" He said, "Justin." I said. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. I don't know any Justins. Not he was him. Like, well, he, well, he said he'd been playing with them. I said, well, a lot of people say they do stuff with us. It's, yeah. You know, it's, I've never met a Justin before. So later on, someone called you Justin. And of course, I by this time, I knew Martin pretty well. I said, is your name Justin? <laughs> <laughs> the man with well, two first names. Yeah, two when, first I, names. <laughs> when I first started working down here in the duck call shop, when it was still down here at Phil and Kay's, I was still doing sales stuff too. So like I'm wearing two hats trying to figure all this stuff out. And somebody calls on there and asks for Justin. 
Well, Jace just hung up on. Him. He's like, huh? Bonk. They call back again. He hung up again. And then finally, I don't even remember. It was one of the buyers or something, I think for Gander Mountain at the time or something like that. And then finally said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I need to speak to Justin Martin. And Jace turned around and looked at me. He's like, your first name's Justin? I mean, I'd been playing golf and hang same yeah. deal. I mean, it, we, we'd known each other for a few years. Right. You know, <laughs> and it was, he was like, huh. Never knew. I didn't either. And it's so, I mean, but yeah, that that story, it it goes all through there. Yeah. And it's just like the first time I got in the duck call shop, I, it was Gander Mountain. They ordered three thousand green miles and three thousand sarges. And Jace was he when I called and told him they wanted it in like seventy two hours. He was like, huh, no, bump hung up on it. <laughs> so I I asked Willie. I said, what do I do? I was, he said, we well, just go down there. So I drove down there, and he was like, well. He said, just me and Gabba, we can't build all this. Like, what, what do you expect? I said, well, I'll help you. He said, can you even blow a duck call? He's like, I ain't ever even heard you. I said, well, when I hunt with you, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm hunting with duck commander. No, I'm not blowing a duck call. But yes, I can. So he threw me one. He said, let me see what you got. And I blew it. And he said, oh, no, sit down. And from that point on, I never left that chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, my office we got cleaned moved. cleaned you a spot yeah. off. <laughs> my office got moved from Brownlee Road to down here at Mouth of Cypress Road because, that quick. Because you were a team player. Yeah. Let's take another break. Um, so did I ever tell you all the story about the Benny Dudu, who used to, who used to, <laughs> who used to be one of our camera guys yeah. for Buck Commander? Uh, so... I don't know who gave him. Was it Willie gave him that name? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. Benny Jerry Doodoo, Doodoo. Jimson. I mean, yeah. he had, he had a, bunch a bunch of, of names. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, because I, I worked at Duck Command for about three years in there when we were doing the show, and I was in that first office right by the reception area. And so I was sitting in there and working on something, and this I hear somebody, you know, I always hear people come in, and they asked Linda at the time, Linda was working there, they was like, "Is we're here to see Ben Mongold. And, yeah. and I was thinking, too, I was thinking, who is that? <laughs> and uh, and and so, <laughs> Linda said, uh, "I'm not sure they. Uh, who is this person?" They were like Ben Mongo, and then uh, then finally she said, "Oh, Benny, Benny Doodoo," and and they were looking. <laughs> you know, so I, by this time I'm looking out the door trying to figure it out. So so Benny walks in and then he meets them as they're walking by my office heading back to where he was. They were like, "Why did they, son? Why did they?" It was his parents. Yeah. They were like, "Why do they call you Benny Doodoo?" <laughs> And Benny said, I think it's a hazing ritual. Yeah. <laughs> you have to survive your first nickname around here. Because, yeah. like, when I started running around here, it was Buster Crab. <laughs> Phil Phil was big on Buster Crab. And then he started calling me Buster. <laughs> and then it got to Fryer. Yeah, Fryer and, Tuck. Fryer Tuck. And then Horsehead. <laughs> I mean, you name them, I've had them around here. Of course, I was just like, hey, well, I guess they're terms of endearment. So I'm cool with it. It doesn't yeah, bother right. me at all. You well, know? it teaches you to answer to a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, uh, uh, that, that was funny. It, yeah, and yeah. and we got our new guy, Clint. So we're going to have to hang him with something here before yeah. long. So well, now it follows to you guys because there's not many of us left you know in any of the day-to-day operations yeah, yeah. so y'all are gonna have to come up with the nicknaming the the whole deal no nah, i let clint sit in the blind one time with phil <laughs> phil 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 hang, hang, phil on, hang him or something he's probably gonna start at jimson that's his go-to for everybody so we, until he gets to know so him. before <laughs> before before josh we had uh, a guy named connor that was our engineer for the podcast and dad called him no name <laughs> no name. No name. And that's what he was the whole time. He was I like, couldn't no name. think of his name. <laughs> oh, no name over. And so Connor, when he left, he went to work at another place. He was like, I'm out of here. And he said, and he called me. He said, hey, this is no name. I said, so you're taking that with you. Huh? You're you're going to just, it's going to live on. Uh, hey, why not? I mean. Yeah, yeah, I didn't funny. remember yeah. that. Oh, no legs, ham. I remember him. Oh, and heaven forbid if you got red hair. Oh, yeah. Because whatever you are, add a Y and followed by Red. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Billy Red, Billy Red Jimmy, Red. Jimmy Red. That's all the, the the people that have come out of hog hair, Louisiana. <laughs> hog hair. They're all redheaded. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> the land where family trees don't fork. Oh, yeah. my goodness gracious. Well, so, uh, so I want to ask you something about on the show. We were talking about kind of – how we were going in and then kind of expectations. But I mean, we had done, all we had done was hunting videos. I mean, yeah. None of us have really been on television except for the little stint with Realtree. So what was that like from y'all's perspective? Cause obviously there was a, I mean, you guys were not, you're not family, but you are family. You're forever yeah. family and you're part of the company. 
what was that? What was how was that experience? How did it affect you then, and how does it affect you now? Because y'all still do appearances, right? Y'all just did something. Yeah, this weekend. we just yeah. got back from Florida. Uh, I, matter of fact, I think that's one of the funnest things that come out. We get to travel everywhere and meet people. America's pretty awesome. You yeah. know, everywhere they, we meet people just like us everywhere. But um, when you go now, is it mostly to do you speak or do you? I mean, yeah, do, do you do, is it a spiritual setting? Is it just mm-hmm. sometimes well, a little bit of everything? It's going to be a spiritual <laughs> setting if you get me. <laughs> well, hey, I, I mean, I think that's one thing that even this whole crew taught us was like, once you make that change, it's hard not to talk about it. Right. Yeah. You know, like, and it, it, it doesn't matter the venue then. And, like, they, and they almost expect it, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Most yeah. of them are like, you know, Beast Feast and right. stuff like that. And, um, you know, at all these church deals. And like that, when we were, me and Guy, when we were just at, was 1,100 people in north of Pensacola, Florida. And it was a called Sportsman's Giving Back. So hunters, like, they raised a bunch of money for charity. They raised over $100,000 that night. And oh, good. So anytime you get to do stuff like that, I mean, I think it's I mean, I mean, think it's awesome. You know, there was a time, from my perspective, you know, I remember when they were talking about it, like, they said, no, we ain't going to show y'all hunting. We like, yeah. And I think we all had the same opinion as Phil, like, <laughs> But that's, that, but that's what we do. How's that like, going to work? Yeah, how's this, yeah, how's this going to work? Working. We're, you know, and I remember, like, the first one, they showed up, and they were like, well, look, it was May. I think it's hot. Yeah. And they said, well, we need you out in the woods trying to catch a duck. And I was like, well, that's fine, but there ain't no ducks around here. <laughs> like, it's yeah. May. And they're like, what are you talking about? Y'all hunt them. I'm like, yeah, but they go that way. <laughs> they go north. They're all and then north. they come back down here. And right. I said, I said, you know, I guess we can go buy one or something. They're like, well, no, just the look of it. And I was thinking to myself, this is <laughs> this is lead balloon stuff here. Like, this ain't yeah. ever. And then they just started, you know, they figured out what rednecks like. They just started blowing stuff up. Yeah. yeah. And next thing we knew, we blew up with yeah. it, you know. But right the end of every episode was, you know, like Dukes of Hazard pushing right. down on the TNT box. Yeah. And something blew up. I always, you know? when I speak, I always tell people our show was some part Mayberry Street, you know, Andy yeah. and – you know, Barney and Cy, and then some part Walton's because of the family, and then some part Dukes of Hazard because it was Rednecks having fun. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, Rednecks going wild. It was, it was pretty uh, – I didn't know what to think when we first done it. I, was, I, I look at picture shows different now. I would see how it, you know, that was the pretty interesting <laughs> part. Shows. Oh, it <laughs> completely <laughs> ruined reality television. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, to see how many people was back there and what it took and – uh, it was kind of intimidating a little bit, but you well, know. Let's uh, let's take our last break. So, uh, John, I noticed with you too. You know, everybody kind of had a role. Martin is a smart guy. He he's a biologist. He's our kind of family biologist. By the way, Lisa and I just last week we sent a picture. Like we 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 see something somewhere and we're like, what is that? And I said, send it to Martin. Yeah. And, and he always knows what it is. And, and I've <laughs> he's, checked he's him. A nerd. I checked him a few times early because I thought, well, he could just tell me that and I'd never know. But he was he's always right about yeah. it. I mean, the man knows his species of anything. Well, I figure if you're going to be the best, you got to know you pray. Yeah. Like you need to know your quarry and you need to know everything about him. It's just like if you were going to be a golfer. Yep. baseball player, anything else, you might as well put the time in to figure out what makes them that. And, you know, I, that's just kind of so. And I, I enjoy it. Right. I am an at heart. I am a nerd. I mean, I was yeah. getting a I was getting a master's degree in biology for crying out loud. You don't <laughs> yeah. do that for the paycheck. I can assure you. Like, that. But so Martin's role in that and we would ask him still do like question because he knows yeah. about honey. So but so on the show, he was kind of the wise acre. He'd throw in the comments. But with Godwin. John, which is funny with me, knowing you so well. So you're you're a deep person. That, I mean, people would know that from watching the show. They mm-hmm. they tried to keep you at a shallow level, which yeah. you played it. I mean, you did it. Mm-hmm. But I remember you calling me a couple of times because one, they wanted you to, you got sprayed by a skunk or something, and so they wanted you to take your shirt off, and yeah. and you were worried about it. You were like, man, if I go down this road, it's kind of like what you were describing earlier. Yeah. You were up to that line, and they wanted you to cross that line, and you didn't know because you got family, <laughs> you got people that you don't want to say, what happened to John God when he went nuts on this show? Yeah. So what was that like? To, but you did it. But You remember what I told well, you? I said, John, if you're going to do it, I said, if you don't want to do it, just say no because, number one, they can't make you do anything. I said, but if you do it, go for it and just go Chris Farley and who yeah. cares? And so, well, 
I stayed off the beach up to that point because <laughs> that's what I was telling my woman. I said, no, nah, I didn't. But when that happened... <laughs> She said, you just took your shirt off in front of a million people. We're going to the beach. Now by the end of it, she's taking your shirt off in front of 15 million people. Oh, you you jumped in that hot tub, son, like Ooh. you ain't seen lately. Yeah, but a hot tub. That's different. <laughs> so now, Martin, I don't know if you've had this same experience. So John and I went to Oregon a couple of years ago, yeah. and there were 1,000, 1,100 people at that mm -hmm. event. And I knew what was going to happen because I had spoken there the year before, and I told him about John, and so we actually went together. John spoke at the Beast Feast, and I preached the next day. And I watched the audience. I, I got, It was fun because I know John's speech, and I'm sitting in the audience. And he gets up and starts going into it. And I can tell these people are like, you know, they're expecting him just to one word clip things like the show. Yeah, they and, were they're expecting my hands <laughs> smell like taco meat. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh -huh. all and they're shocked because they realize that John is a deep person, deep spiritual man. And so when he goes through the whole thing, the response is always huge because it's unexpected. Like they they did not expect that when you got up there. So <laughs> that was one of my favorite things is to watch that. And it was the same way this past weekend at this deal we went to. I don't think they were expecting us to share the gospel at all. They thought we would get up there, tell Duck Dynasty stories, basically be stand-up comedians. Right. Which we're really good at that, too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. but, you know. And you give them a little of that. I do, oh, too. Oh, absolutely. Right. You keep them laughing, keep right. them engaged. But before you get out of there, like, I mean, our job as Christians is That's to right. share. Like, right. so, you know, and with me and Godwin, it's always fun because, like, our stories are so similar. Yeah. And A, employment, and B, the transition into being a Christian. So like we can play off of each other's story. You can interchange our stories in the names and they're yeah. they're very similar. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't running around with Tony Neal at the Western Club. <laughs> but you know, I had I had twenty other people I was running around with at a different bar. So like, right. you know, I mean they're just very interchangeable. And so it's always like I love getting to do stuff with God. Well and even and that's the neat thing is because you guys did it even before before it was a show. But even doing the show, Mountain Man became a Christian because mm -hmm. of the show. Yeah. I mean, really, because it started and he was on that one episode and then he started hanging out with y'all in the, in the duck call room. And the next thing you know, he's a believer. And so that's really what it's all about. And again, this show, this uh, not the show, the company was founded with divine intervention. I mean, oh, we believe that fully. I probably wouldn't be a Christian if it weren't for this company. Right. I mean, like, I mean, obviously I was raised in a, in a church and all of that. We but, all were, but, but we left yeah, it. Yeah, we yeah. left it. And I don't know that I would have returned had it not been working every day, surrounded by Goblin, Jay, Cy, Phil. I mean, that, that essentially you can look at, I mean, it saved my life, yeah. and especially on an eternal aspect. Right. So, you know, it's like, you know, I, it, but it was divine. Yeah, I was getting a graduate degree and I finally, I was about done with it and I had to make a choice, duck commander or finish this thing. And, I, yeah, I thought about it. It's a good it. thing through all of this, you know, there's been no tyrants. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like somebody banging on you all the time, you know. Right. You know, none of that. It's a very organic situation. <clears throat> so the last thing I want to ask you all about, because something that's unique about the two of you from all the rest of us in our crew is that you both have hunting wives. None of our wives mm -hmm. have ever cared anything about hunting. They they, they were forced to go once for the Manelli show. Yeah. And Lisa was like, I know now why I don't do this. Yeah. I'll never it's do that. It's just confirmed everything it confirmed that I believe. confirmed everything yeah. I always worried about. So so what's it like being married to hunting wives? Because now Paula wasn't always a She hunter. wasn't always. She shot bows, you know, in the yard when Joe Hanna was young. Yep. She shot bows, and we'd go to these local tournaments and do that. And once Joe Hanna got out of the house, she looked at me, she said, I think I want to shoot a deer. I said, well, okay. So I got her one of them pop-up blinds, and I put it down there by the flag, you know, and here comes one. She puts it, and that just that got her. <laughs> just like everybody <laughs> yeah. else, she was hooked. She, she, all it she was hooked, and, uh, man, she was uh, – it, it's pretty exciting. I, I guess it would be – because I just about quit hunting because I'd go sit with her. And I'd film her or whatever. Right. It's just exciting to see her expression. The last deer she killed, um, she was just she was just so tense. She said, 
There's Jumanji drums in my ears. <laughs> oh, oh. I love it. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and Brittany's a hunter. Brittany is. She wasn't raised around hunting, but I knew early on in our relationship, I was like, I'm taking her hunting so that she can see what, why this is what it is in my life. Like, she needs to understand that whether she likes it or not, I don't care. Right. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to force her to hunt. And then she went. And I remember the first duck she killed, a Gadwall Drake. She was out there. It was cold, buddy. It was cold. I'm talking about cold. And her face was like starting to change color. I was like, come on, let's go. Like, we need to go to the house. Like, you're, you're cold. Yeah. And she was like, no, I'm sticking it out. She's hard headed, but <laughs> she still is. And, and so am I. But, and she finally, we finally got a gadwall down there in the decoys. And it's a miracle she killed the duck because at that time she didn't tell me. She was shooting right handed, but she didn't tell me she couldn't like close her left eye or nothing yeah. to give her a little aim. So she shot it across the gun. So, I mean, it's a miracle duck. I think he died of a heart attack. <laughs> um, you know, but anyway, but from that point on, she was like, oh, I get it now. Like, and, and it started clicking mm -hmm. with her and she, she just enjoys it. And she, you know, she's gotten to the point. It was fun for me because it was a new person hunting. It was right. like taking a kid. Right. Yeah. Like, cause she's getting Tell to experience you, things for the first time. <laughs> right. Like, right. The first time that bunch of 50 teal got right. And she was like, I couldn't even shoot, you know. Yeah. And it was just kind of cool to watch that. And to watch her now mature into a hunter. Like, I can take her and put her on a deer stand by herself. Or I can, you know, now when we go duck hunting, she's like, you think we ought to move these decoys? I'm like, ho, 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 time out. <laughs> or, or, or she'll give it to, you sure are calling a lot. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. hey she's going to turn into yeah, a critic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One day I just hung my calls up and hung them on the tree. I said, go ahead. Now do that's it. Do what you know. Yourself. That's go when ahead. you know she's a true hunter when yeah. she starts criticizing oh, what you're yeah. wearing. So it, it's fun, and she loves to eat it. And, you know, last night we ate fried backstrap. And so mm -hmm. he, she likes seeing it go full circle. I, I don't think – I think if she didn't see it go full circle on from the, the prep work to the hunting to the cleaning to the eating, I think there's a lot of that that she would be like, no, nah, I'm out on. But you know, there's more and more you know, women joining. We were talking the about that yeah. crowd in the last podcast. Really which is why I wanted to bring that up because these guys, both their wives, yeah. which I think is is fantastic. I mean, I, I love it that it's so, and you know, I'm big on relationships, which I had the honor um, these seven years ago, this coming May, yeah, uh, of of tying the knot with Brittany and Martin, and it was at the peak of popularity of the show. Mm -hmm. And we were actually all down in Fort Morgan, Alabama and uh, on, on double secret probation. So nobody would know where the <laughs> wedding was, yeah. but uh, that was a, it's, it's been a beautiful thing to watch the growth of. Yeah, the man. It's almost seven years. I got it all figured out. Don't yeah, you? exactly. <laughs> well, that well, marriage, we'll speak, that, that marriage will teach you something new every day. <laughs> not a living, we'll son. speak more in about eight years. That yeah, be nah. <laughs> well, look, it's your podcast is not, it's a brother podcast. It's, it has been erroneously, called a kitty podcast this is an adult podcast and the uh, dad and i have both been on it's great so if you haven't checked out the duck call room if you're an unashamed listener you'll love it it's a lot of fun a lot of laughing and uh and these guys are great so thank y'all for coming today and thanks for, for jace me. we had some fun yeah y'all yeah, ain't laugh this much ever have no, you? no. <laughs> <laughs> nah. thanks for listening to the unashamed podcast help us out by rating us on itunes and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.